Hello there, I'm Peter Cook, the Academy of Rock, blending business and music. We deliver masterclasses, keynotes and great events that take business excellence ideas and blend them with parallel insights from the world of music, be it rock, jazz, orchestral, whatever it is, the whole range of music. It sounds a bit weird, but of course music, simplified, is applied physics. Lots of business relies on logic, mathematics and stuff like that. So actually it's not such an odd parallel. Over 20 or so years, we've worked with companies like Unilever, Pfizer, GlaxoSmithKline, the United Nations, the Metropolitan Police, the NHS. You name it, we've done it. From sort of private PLC companies through to public service organisations and some third sector charitable organisations as well. Take a look at some of our keynotes and events. Meet the musicians who want to rock your business world. Featuring Ozzy Osbourne's legendary guitarist Bernie Torme, around 80 business people paid good money to be told, perhaps you need to change your tune. So ACDC have only produced three pieces of music in their life, perhaps. That's a bit cruel. And they've been hugely successful, but their market has remained stable. But most markets are not stable, and you need to be adaptive. And so a good analogy for an adaptive organisation would be someone like David Bowie, Prince or Madonna. Peter Cook spent most of his career in the pharmaceutical industry. His goal now, to show how best practice in the music business can be translated to everyone's workplace. I mean, you've never seen the drummer send the bassist an email when they're all working as one. Clearly this isn't for everybody, but what these guys want to get across is that you can balance that business need for order and structure with a little spark of creativity. It might just give you the edge. Bernie Torme has seen the murkier side of the music industry as well as the good. He says there are plenty of parallels in business. From rock, I've learned um, longevity, to keep on pushing and um, reinvent one's health. And I think that that is um, relevant to, to business and, and to individuals in all areas. Despite all this new way of thinking, some old hell-raising habits die hard. It's gone out. Oh, that was very impressive. Rock and roll. Owen oh, Thomas, Bloomberg, London. Well, business and design are intimately mixed. You know, great design blends style and substance. And today we've been exploring the Fender Stratocaster as an absolute brilliant example of where style and substance come together. But it doesn't have to be a physical object. It could be an app or a service. You still have to actually have design. And good design does what it says on the tin, and bad design does not. Customer experience and creativity, I would say, are the, are the new form of competition. In a, in a disruptive world, the only advantage you have is having a better thing uh, sooner in the marketplace. So you have to be creative and you have to engage customers that are being bombarded with stuff all day and all night. So customer experience and engagement become very important. And there's a huge difference between companies that manage to do that effectively and those that just bombard people with push marketing because that isn't very effective so you've got to pull your customers along with you I don't see this as being a, a, an either-or decision. If you're doing digital marketing, you probably are also trying to do traditional marketing. The most successful companies manage to merge these things rather than treating them separately. So, probably that was stolen from... Purple Rain. Anyone seen Prince? Good. Amazing. How many times? Twice. Twice. Yeah, that... Really? <laughs> <laughs> the topic is uh, talent uh, acquisition and retention. And uh, we are trying uh, to uh, bring to the HR market here new ideas. So I think it's a different view and it's very interesting for the people involved here. Uh, to hear about new innovative ways in HR.
economy where intelligence, information and sharing and collaboration are the watchwords of all successful businesses and organisations. So we've moved to what I call a brain-based economy. And I was told by a neuroscientist that by 2030, man, woman and machine will have reached the point of singularity where we're indistinguishable. And so you really need to learn fast in such an economy. And this is, this is setting you up for that success, really. So you may be asking, what gives you the audacious right to suggest that your seminars are better than the usual fare? <laughs> well, I am an unusual mixture of scientist, business person and musician. I started life working for a pharmaceutical company, working on innovative drug treatments, scaling them up and bringing them successfully to market. So my early years were spent on, on human insulin development and the first HIV AIDS treatment. Later on, I worked for a business school, business schools, uh, in several countries actually, teaching MBAs and diplomas in business, which gave me all the exposure to all the different business types of people, and diverse mixtures of people. At the same time, I kept music as a hobby. Uh, when I was 18, I had to choose between music and business. I think I chose wisely. Music has become an important metaphor for much of what I do. And so I bring the analysis and rigour and strategy from the business school plus the sort of creativity and spark that comes from music. It's a unique combination. 
In terms of my own credentials for, for doing this, I've written some 14 books on business and leadership. One or two of them have got interviews with Sir Richard Branson amongst others, but some of them use music as the sort of substrate to explain uh, business and leadership concepts. Here's a few of them. Sex, Leadership and Rock and Roll. Uh, this is a book that uh, uh, deals with the question of making relationships and people management work, how to motivate and lead people, and how to deliver the work, how to be, so, so to speak, on stage, which is the rock and roll part. I've also written the shortest book on HR ever written. Punk Rock People Management is a digest of 39 pages, not 39 steps, on most of the important issues that face HR strategists and HR leaders. Another book I've written is The Music of Business. This again is a digest of the parallel insights of music and business. So you've got things like U2 on strategy, Led Zeppelin on leadership, uh, Prince on innovation, Brian Eno on sort of improvisation and stuff like that, and a whole lot of other stuff. The books have even been translated into Polish. I can't read a bit of them, I'm sorry. In terms of my own musical credibility, of course I write and perform my own songs, but I've also had the privilege to work with one or two Class A rock stars. Uh, Bernie Torme, who worked with uh, Ozzy Osbourne and Ian Gillan of Deep Purple for many, many years. And I've performed with him a few times. And also uh, Patty Russo, Meatloaf's long-term singing partner. And I also sponsored a world tour that was an utter failure for punk microstar John Otway. It was a lot of fun. We lost a lot of money and we learned a lot. Over 20 years, I've interviewed a cadre of musical legends, from Roberta Flack, through John Mayall, the godfather of the blues, through to Prince's uh, musical entourage, and members of Bob Marley's outfit. Have a look at some of the interviews that we've done. They're amazing. I also offer personal one-to-one -one coaching or mentoring on subjects that keep you awake at night. So if you've got a pithy organisational problem or, or something that's bothering you, that's uh, you know, eluded all popular imagination, then get in touch. I'll work with you through it and I'll offer you um, a wide range of options that perhaps you hadn't thought of and I'll make sure that you then enact the, the thing. So it's not therapy, it's coaching that works. And we've worked across the world with organisations over 28 years or so. So you're buying a lot of wisdom and a great deal of experience here. Not a friendly co-pilot. If you're looking to get your rocks off after your masterclass or day conference, then we actually will work with you on stage and offer you a sort of live jam session format. And here's a couple of examples to show you what it looks like.
So if you want to purge your inner business demons through music, do get in touch with me, Peter Cook at the Academy of Rock. Thank you very, very much. And finally, if you want to see us doing a full interview, there's an extra seven minutes on this video where we're interviewed by Jessica DiMassa at an innovation conference talking about a range of subjects that relate to creativity and the leadership of creativity that converts into innovation. Hi, this is Jessica DiMassa at Frontiers Health and I'm here with Peter. Peter, please introduce yourself for everyone watching. I'm Peter Cook, um, Managing Director of Human Dynamics and the Academy of Rock, blending business intelligence and music. I love the fact that you blend those two things together and that's such an unusual combination here at a healthcare conference. So um, tell us a little bit about how organizations can really infuse a culture of creativity and innovation um, with their teams. People often think that it's about having brainstorming tools to, you know, if we spread those around in our organization life will get better. All you need is a flip chart, right? All you need is a flip <laughs> chart and six thinking hats. Uh -huh. That does help, but it is temporary. It will develop a climate of innovation temporarily for a team that needs some great ideas and brainstorming done well improves the efficiency of sort of creative thinking and conversion into innovation but what you asked about was how do you create a culture where innovation is more frequent right and you know better innovation you know, so better ideas and more frequently happening and that's what a lot of organizations want I was very lucky to have interviewed Richard Branson for mm -hmm. my latest book where he talked about the things that he did in Virgin that inculcate a culture of innovation where it's just a natural phenomenon rather than a sort of stuck on thing. Techniques play their role, but in fact you do need this culture and it really comes down to what you might call HR leadership practices okay. of how you hire great people, trust them to, to bring their brains to work, mm -hmm. all of them, you know, make sure they're encouraged and supported. It's a humanistic leadership practices and behaviours are more important than didactic, you know, do what I say. If you say the great companies that do this sort of do this naturally, but of course you can apply the techniques. Richard has interesting reward and recognition schemes to encourage a, a pull through the organisation, you know, getting people to, for example, seek forgiveness and not permission. <laughs> so one woman suggested that they should have virgin brides and, and Richard thought what a great idea and it flopped. Oh. And the other point, of course, if you're going to have a culture of innovation, one does need, therefore, to forgive people for occasionally failing. Not repetitive, mm -hmm. uh, but Richard's had his fair share of, of failures, including sure. ones he's imposed upon himself. <laughs> like when uh, Virgin decided to take over the co world of Coca-Cola. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, they took advice and said, you've got to do it big in America. So they, he hired a Sherman tank to drive down the, front, the boulevard and crush loads of cans of Coke. Now, you'd think that was a marvellous publicity stunt to launch your brand, and it was, except Coke were unmoved by the whole moment, and Richard realised he didn't understand 
the procurement power of Coca-Cola. Right. They just phoned up all the suppliers and said, we make too much Coke, can we put it on your shelves, please? And they flooded, literally, the market with Coca-Cola for a month, by which time his stunt had been forgotten. forgotten. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about Richard is he's prepared to admit his failures, where most leaders don't lead by example. And I think if people see people saying, look, oops, I did it again, sure. broke Britney Spears. <laughs> if they see that you fail and you're able to say, look, it happened. It does in, it sends all the right messages. Mm -hmm. So it's cultural, it it cultural management is really important uh, to, to actually have a continuous culture of innovation. You can do some things with tools. So let me ask you another question too, a little bit differently. So you're a musician, mm -hmm. so and I know you've written about you know music, and you've been talking about that here about what what you can learn about being innovative and creative from music. So what are some takeaways for that? A couple of takeaways um, in music, we have a thing called dissonance, which is when notes sort of jar together really badly. Okay. The beginning of Painted Black has some notes that are too <laughs> close together, and it's beautiful. It, you know, dissonance in music can be used to great advantage in classical music and jazz. Mm -hmm. Musicians use notes that jar to actually create a wonderful, wonderfully different things that are sure. memorable. But in, mu in business, uh, cognitive dissonance is in the ballroom is when everyone smiles at each other at a meeting. Uh -huh. they, go, they go to the toilet and swear about each other. Right. And that costs billions of pounds. So leaders genuinely need to value diversity in, in their, their, their groups and their teams. And that means listening to views that you probably wouldn't have thought of and may not even agree with. And so musicians and great leaders are great at what I call emotional intelligence, which is mm -hmm. being a master of their skills internally, what their professional skills are, and paying attention on the outside. Mm -hmm. Great musicians, you watch them. They're actually they're doing this internal stuff and they're paying Thanks. attention. Great leaders do the same and they're willing to hear views and, and ideas that are contrary and out of touch with their own. So there's one. Okay. There's plenty more. Oh, well, th that's a beautiful analogy. I love that. And um, I wanted to ask one last question mm. of you um, while we have you. So obviously we're here at a healthcare conference and you're the very first musician I've ever spoken with at a healthcare conference. So I mean, from your perspective and you know, obviously somebody who knows a lot about innovation and business, mm. what, can, what can the healthcare industry do to really transform uh, for the future? How can they be more innovative? What would you challenge them to do? Well, surprisingly, I, I, I didn't mention this, I was, I'm rock and roll because I'm a musician. I've got two children that cover sex. Uh, but I, work, I also have drugs in my background. I work okay. for Wellcome, the pharmaceutical company, oh, okay, and great. scaled up the first human insulin product and the first HIV AIDS drug. So I actually have, you have that background. Have that background. So I've seen old pharma. I've seen old pharma trying to convert to new pharma. And it's a real struggle for them because they have monolithic structures. I mm -hmm. do quite a lot of work for companies like Pfizer and Johnson Johnson and Merck, where they have these bureaucratic structures. But the world of health where, which we're at, is moving fast. People collaborate with people they don't own. Right. You know, they just get together. And, of course, with global uh, collaboration, mm -hmm. the pharma companies don't know quite how to sort of, you know, work with these people. What they tend right. to do is buy the company if they like it. Like, yeah. But they need to learn to collaborate much better with people that they don't control in the sense of paying them and owning them. And there are lots of people, I think, that also want to work with large pharma who've got resources to, to offer them. So I think collaboration, and you can learn so much about collaboration from music. And I've, you know, I've, I've interviewed a few people in Prince's uh, <laughs> outfit, the Sheila Ree and the, the bass player. Sure. And they're really good at collaborating with people that aren't the same as themselves and who they don't own. So there's lots of parallels in that area as well. Mm -hmm. The pharma industry should really listen to a lot more music and understand <laughs> how musicians collaborate I'm here to help. Wonderful. Well, we want to make sure that it's the new boss that's not the same as the old boss, right? Ah. <laughs> Thank you, Peter, for joining us. This is Jessica DeMassa of Frontiers Health.